In this section, we're going to be hypothesis testing for the population mean mu when sigma is known. So um, when sigma is known, what we're going to be doing is we're going to assuming the null is true, and then we're going to be using the p-value approach. To use the p-value approach, first we determine the null and alternative hypothesis, which we covered in the previous videos. Next, we're going to calculate the test statistic and the p-value, which we'll cover in this video. We also need the significance level, which they provide us. And then we're going to compare the p-value, this guy, to the significance level to make a decision to reject the null or not reject the null. So this is how we're going to calculate it. So to determine the test statistic, we are going to use this formula here, when sigma is known. When we're trying to find mu, the test statistic for mu when sigma is known, that's the formula we're going to use. And to calculate the p-value, we're going to use the, the, uh, the Excel norm dist, okay? Then if the p is low, the null must go. So remember that. If the p is low, the null must go. So if the p is less than our significance level, we reject. And if it's greater than or equal to, we're not going to reject. All right, so how do we calculate the p-value? So to calculate the p-value, um, we're going to use Excel, and I'll pull up um, another example. Um, it's actually a little bit easier than this. Um, but basically, we're going to use um, these here and Excel. So again, in the p-value approach here, basically, if it's a left-tailed test, remember, we're looking at the alternative, then we can just type it into Excel because that gives us the left side, right? But if it's a right-tailed test, then we're going to have to do 1 minus because this is um, the opposite there. And if it's a two-tailed test, it depends what our z-value is. If we're given the negative z-value over here, we would just do 2 times whatever we get because it's to the left. But if it's positive, we're going to have to do 2 times 1 minus because it's to the right. So this uh, slide is super important. It gives you every step you need. So first we're going to do the null and alternative. Then we're going to state the level. Then we're going to calculate the test statistic. Then this z-score goes right into here. If it's a right-tailed, remember we're looking at the alternative hypothesis here. That's going to tell us what to type into Excel. Once we get our p-value, we're going to compare it to the significance level and then interpret the results. Let's do an example. So consider the following hypotheses. A sample of 80 observation results in a sample mean of 144. The population standard deviation is known to be 28. Calculate the value of the test statistic and the p-value. So they already give us our null and alternative hypothesis. We know we're dealing with mu. And they give us the population standard deviation, so we know that. So we have the test statistic to calculate the test statistic, which is the z-score, the test z. We would do x bar minus mu sub zero over sigma over the square root of n. This here is our um, mu sub zero. So the x bar, our sample mean, is 144 minus 150 over our standard deviation is 28 divided by the square root of 80. So just be careful when you type that in. Let's turn this down. So um, 144 minus 150 divided by, and I like to use parentheses here, 28 divided by the square root of 80. So we get negative 1.92. So now let's take a look, um, let's just look at what that means. They're only asking um, for the test statistic and p-value, but our z-score then is negative 1.92. And let's look at our alternative hypothesis. That means it's a left-tailed test over here. So our p-value is going to give us this probability here, which we've done in previous chapters. So our p-value is going to be calculated in Excel, and that is going to be, so if I look at that chart, and again, we've done this in Chapter 6, norm.dist, because we've got our z-score, and it's already to the left, so we don't need to worry about that. And we know that it's standard normal. So our p-value then is 0 0.0274. So that's our p-value, and then that's our test statistic. 
Let's look at example two here. So a research analysis disputes a trade group's prediction that back to school spending will average this amount per year. She believes that the average will differ from this amount. She decides to conduct conduct a test on the basis of a random sample of 30 households with school aged children. She calculates the sample mean and she also believes that it's normally distributed and they get, okay, so they give us a lot of information. So let's collect up the information here. So average of this amount per year. So A, the competing hypothesis. So A, let's get our null and our alternative. So <clears throat> they're talking about the average. So we know we're going to have mu and mu and we're talking about 6 O oh, six forty. So what are the symbols? Well, they tell us that they believe that it is this amount and equal is always our null. And she believes that it's different. Remember different means not equal to. So this person is con conducting the test. So this is the claim. This is what they think. They think it's going to be different. So that's going to be a, so now for B, what is the allowed probability of a type one error? That's our significance level. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about a significance level of 5%, 0.05. That's our significance level. Now C wants to calculate the test statistic and the p-value. So let's take a look at our test statistic. Let's grab up all our data. So we know that a random sample of 30, so N equals 30, sample mean X bar 622.85, and population standard deviation is 65. So our Z, our test Z, this is our test statistic, is equal to X bar 622.85 minus 60640 all over 65 divided by the square root of 30. So we can type that in, 622. 85 minus 606.4 divided by parentheses 65 divided by square root of 30. One more. 1. Point, let's say 39. So our test statistic is 1.39. What does this mean on the standard normal? So we know that it's 1.39, but let's look where to shade on our test statistic. And we actually, I'm sorry, our alternative hypothesis, it's not equal to, which actually means that it's a two-tailed test. And so the p-value is going to be in both directions here. So if we go back here, our test statistic is 1.39. This is the value we're looking at here. So if we use 1.39, we're going to get this area right here. We want to double that, but remember that we're going to have to do 1 minus because that's going to give us to the right and uh, the Excel is going to give us to the left and we need to the right. The other option is you could just use negative 1.93 if you preferred, but um, we'll just follow the directions here. So because our Z is positive, we're going to do 2 times 1 minus the normal distribution. We're going to do 1, I'm sorry, 2 times, and then make sure you use a parenthesis here or you will get the wrong answer, 1 minus norm dot dist 1.39011. Yes, they're going to add an extra parenthesis for me because I missed it. So we get our p-value is 0.1645. So our p-value is equal to 0 0.1645. Now, at D, it says, at the 5% significance level, does average back-to-school spending differ? So does it differ? So if the P is low, the null must go. So let's compare the P to the significance level. How does that compare to 0 0.05? Now, I like to do this. Um, let's get out of Excel here for a moment. I like to look at each decimal. So after the decimal, I have a 1, and then I have a 0. So this is clearly bigger than. And because it's bigger than, it's not low, so the null does not go, so we do not reject the null. So if we do not reject the null, that's kind of like saying we accept the null, which means does it differ? It um, At the 5% significance level, it does not differ because we're not rejecting the null. So we have insufficient evidence to conclude that it differs. So that's it written out for you.
And we're going to do two more examples and a couple of you tries in the next video.